I'm gonna show you how to cross over for beginners with tips to help you learn it more quickly, hacks to make it more effective, along with three variations that you're gonna need in game. Let's get started. The concept of the crossover is simple. You're just bringing the basketball from one hand to the other. So it could be as simple as this, switching hands. But in a game, we're gonna to wanna to swing the ball more side to side and make sort of a V motion with that dribble. Now there are times when you'll want to do this more straight up and down hand switch thing, but that's for when you get more advanced. Don't worry about that for now. So to do this, you want to have your hand facing sort of 45 degrees to the ground. Whichever direction your palm faces is generally the direction the ball will move. So if I keep my palm sort of facing that way, you'll notice it moves 45 degrees. It'll bounce 45 degrees. This hand will be here waiting 45 degrees. Another hack that'll help is think about swinging both your arms sideways like this when you're crossing over. It'll make it more smooth and natural. And then also a little curl of the fingers and the wrist, even though it's 45 degrees, that little curl will make it more smooth, natural, and get a little snap at the end to make the crossover quicker. Now, if you're young and that's too hard for you, a quick progression you could do is just use two hands, let go with one at the last second, and then make sure this hand's in that 45 degree angle, and then catch it with both hands like this. And you can do the same thing the other way. And then as you get better, you can do that and try to catch it and carry with one hand, and then go from carrying from one hand, carrying to the other, and then work your way up into dribble, cross, dribble, cross. Here's a few tips and hacks to take it next level. We want to have a high ball and hand time on this to give you more control. I have control over the basketball when it's in my hand. When I don't, I have zero control over the ball. I can't manipulate it. I can't move it. To have a high ball and hand time, I want to have my hands close to each other on the catch and the release, and I want to have them low to the ground. If I have them close to each other but high, it's still going to be a lower ball and hand time. And if I have my hands low but wide, again, it's going to be a low ball and hand time. But if I bring both of those pieces together, It'll be nice and easy, and I can feel the basketball more quickly when it comes off the ground. This will also help you in the future with not losing the basketball as much. Let's say you hit a stone or a dead spot on the floor, the basketball is more flat, more inflated. Once you release the basketball, that can really change where the basketball ends up, right? If you hit a stone, it might bounce straight up. If you hit a dead spot, it might only dribble up this high. But if I have this hand down low waiting, I can feel the basketball early and react and still keep control over the basketball. This will also help you in the future with reacting to the defense, right? If my hand's down here low waiting, I can push it back this way if there's an opportunity to strike over here. I can do a quick in and out. I can maybe push it behind my back to protect it. I can maybe go into a quick protection dribble. All those things can happen a lot faster if this hand's down low waiting. A few more hacks that will help with this is get that butt low. That'll bring your hands lower. It's hard to have your hands low when you're standing more upright. Also having your feet wider will make it easier to get your hands lower. You can see the difference here versus here without even bending my knees. I add that in, now my hands are real low to the ground. Again, there's exceptions to this rule or maybe you wanna have a low ball in hand time, but again, that's for once you start getting a little more advanced. One other quick hack is to try to grip the basketball real tight with your fingers the second it comes into your hand. Again, there's gonna be exceptions to this where you wanna let it slide in your hands and really get some extra air time. We'll talk about that in a second. But for the most part, if you can kind of try to almost like palm the basketball with your fingers, even if you can't palm it, just squeeze it. It gives you better control more quickly. And what you can focus on is trying to keep the basketball from spinning. So once it gets in my hand, I'm gonna to try to stop that spin as quick as I can. And if I can learn how to do that, let, learning how to let it spin a little longer will be a pretty easy thing to pick up. You just simply keep your hand a little more flat and less curved. All right, well, all this is great. It's not gonna do much for you in game unless you're able to move. So here's a couple drills that you can work on that are super simple. And then I'm gonna give you the three different things that you need to have down to be effective with it in game. So quick setup is having a bunch of cones set up. You can start off about twice shoulder width apart and you can do two different things. For starters, just go dribble, cross, dribble, cross, doing a zigzag motion through the cones, change the directions. The same side foot as the hand that's dribbling is planting, and then I'm pushing through the gap after the crossover with the opposite foot. So now I'm gonna come here, one, two, I'm gonna plant off this foot to get through the gap. Once you got that down, you can get rid of the regular dribble and just do all crossovers and no regular dribbles in between. Okay, variations you'll wanna work on are almost all gonna use that same footwork we just did with the cones. First one is a hard step out and kind of forward almost 45 degrees to act like you're gonna attack this way. You can play around with doing this on the run and then stopping and making a quick direction change so there's very little pause. For the second the ball hits the hand and the foot hits the ground, push it across. But another variation of that is the Iverson crossover. The Iverson crossover is a little bit more advanced. You're simply gonna have a little bit of a hesitation where you wait a second and come a little more upright. Then you're gonna take a hard step, extend the ball a little more, and then go into that same crossover footwork pattern just like this. The third variation you can combine with the first two, and it's the side step. Crossing over sideways, but then also moving your feet sideways. You can use this to create maybe a space for a shot, or you can also open a driving lane if your defender's here, and you can get here, now you can maybe drive. Or let's say they decide that they're gonna jump with you and they overcommit, you can 
cross back over this way. If you want a full workout and hacks to take across over the next level, check out the free workout pinned to the comments.